Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. This is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. One of the very first, I think it was actually the second video I did on my channel um, since December of last year, was like uh, eight red flags or 10 red flags to look out for in a relationship. And I thought I'd touch on that tonight, but there's an article here that has like 50 red flags and it's not all inclusive. But I wanted to touch on this again because I think they brought up some good ones. And then I'm going to actually add, I'm, I'm, now we're not doing a deep dive into this. Each one I'm just going to say a sentence on, but I, I want you to think either back to a relationship that you had where either you were doing this or the person you were with was doing it. And when I was doing this, I found out like there was actually a lot of red flags that I didn't, I didn't realize. And there's big ones. There's, there's really, really big ones. And then there's some smaller ones and, and they might be the little handheld flag that you wave like this versus the 20 foot one that's over top of the building. But I wanted to talk down through this because this is just a topic I haven't, and I'll put a link here for my other video. But I wanted to go down through this because I think there's some good ones in here that we should talk about. And this isn't necessarily just for relationships and this isn't just for um, dating. This can be for friendships, this can be, and it's not going like one way specific. It's just, boom. Okay, so um, red flags come at any time in a relationship. Sometimes they come within the first week of dating while others don't show their face until six months in. That is one of the problems I ran into is a lot of the bigger ones started coming out at three to six months and I did not see them coming. So let's talk about a few of these. And, and again, it'll just be kind of a fun one where we can talk poorly about people we've broken up with. <laughs> they never apologize for bad behavior. Um, this one's one that I ran into many times myself. Um, if they do something wrong or something to hurt you, but they never accept responsibility for the issue and rather just throw up excuses to why their behavior is okay. I've had that one before and that one, um, and I think they, if I ever mention this and then they actually have this as one of the red flags, I'll jump over it later. But one of the ones I realized is that in a lot of relationships, when you get in an argument with a woman about something or with a guy even, but I mean, mostly, I have to say it's 99% of this this way. When you get in an argument with a woman about something, even if it's her fault, she'll storm off and you don't want things to be awkward and, and you don't want her giving you the silent treatment because it's uncomfortable and you end up being the one that apologizes. Look, I'm sorry we got in an argument. I didn't know it was such a big deal to you. And, and we go all blue pill and we're the ones that will apologize. Now I would go, like if she wants to be like that, Again, I, I'm not going to live with somebody. If, if she wants to be like that, we're just not going to talk. And maybe we won't talk ever again if she's going to not apologize for her being a bad actor. They think all their exes are crazy and don't see the common denominator. This one's a key one. Uh, I, I saw a couple of you post and you a couple of you emailed me this where women will say, oh, my ex was this or they did this or they or I've never really heard a woman very often say, I broke up with him because I wasn't ready for a serious relationship or I wanted to play the field or I didn't like the fact that I made more money than him or I, whatever. I don't really ever remember hearing that. Usually it's he did, he he cheated, he said something. It can't always be one way. And I used to think, well, that's great. It, guys break up with her because so she must be good and she just has a bad picker. No, the truth is she's probably lying. Uh, when they don't text you back quick, but are always on their phone. This one's another one. Don't leave me on red. If you, if you've, and if, if here's the thing, if you're just conversating back and forth, that's fine. I, I don't care. Um, I'm not that desperate or needy. But one thing is I, if, if I ask a question like, Hey, uh, you said, uh, such and such, I'm trying to think of something that, that I talked to somebody about, Hey, you said you were going to watch or the debates were on tonight, or there was something on, um, you, what time was that? Do you remember? When, you see, when I see that you've read that, but you don't have the courtesy to reply and say, it's an eight or I don't remember or anything, especially if I've asked you a question, that, man, that bothers me. Because it, it just shows, well, I'm on my phone, but I can't even be bothered to really respond to you. You don't like their friends. Um, I will say this in the same sentence. You don't like their friends and or all their friends are male. That's a, that's a huge warning sign. I've, and I didn't realize this, but a lot of ways women will end a relationship with a guy is she doesn't have the ability to say, that's it, we're done, it's over. It just kind of is a ghost fade 
where the guy still thinks there's some interest there, and but she calls them just friends. And all of a sudden you realize she has six just friends that she used to sleep with. Not a good sign. If she has, a, a matter of fact, I'm really not, uh, you gotta be careful because un unless, unless you're introduced to the male friend and there's pictures of you on social media or whatever else she's busy with, unless she makes it known to everyone you're together, huge red flag. Uh, they keep score about things you've said a long time ago. Yeah, they use your own words against you. Gee, that never happens in an argument. They're upset with you when you go and hang out with your friends or family over them. Yes, that means that they aren't they aren't okay when when you want to have space to yourself. But then when they want space for themselves, well, it's just I'm just going out with friends or it's girls' night out or why are you being so suffocating? But when it's the other way around, they hate that. When they complain or talk about their ex, that means they're not over them. Uh, it should be done and gone. If they keep your relationship a secret, and that's whether they keep it from friends, whether they keep it from their male friends, especially, um, or they just, if they're on social media all day long, posting cat pictures and everything else, but they've never made a mention of you. And I'm not big on social media. I don't use it. But my point being is if they do use it, but you're still not mentioned, or you never get introduced to their friends, or when you guys go out, there's no meeting of friends, that's always a bad sign. They don't get along with many other people, obviously. They only tell half truths. That's the, oh, Becky and I are going out Friday night. We went out, uh, we went dancing until about 2 a.m. And then I had too much to drink. And then I, I slept all, I slept in late at, until 10 a.m. And then I came home and that's when I called you. That's why I didn't message you back. But there might be, oh, we went out to the club and we went, had a couple of drinks. I met up with this dude and slept with him and we didn't really like go to sleep until 3 a.m. And then I woke up late and I didn't get home till 10. Like there's a whole lot missing there. Uh, they throw temper tantrums over little things. Yeah, that's like a kid. They treat their family poorly. That's not good. And if they have a bad relationship with either of their parents, that's not good. How many of you guys just 13 in are like, oh man, yeah, I like many of those. They make rules over you like who you can hang out with, where you can go, who you can talk to. And here's the thing. I just said, if they have a lot of guy friends, don't date them. I'm not saying you have to make a rule that she can't talk to them. I'm not saying that. I'm saying if she does have a lot of guy friends, don't even date. And if you do decide to date her, you have no say in what she can do. It's a free world. This is also why we advise not to get married, not to live with a woman because if she does things you don't like, you have no control over that. Whether you're married or not, you cannot control her. So then if she does awful things, you have only one choice, divorce, divorce court for you, and the end. They refuse to get close to your family. It's another one. You are one that always apologizes to end the fights. I talked about that one. They password protect all of their devices. That's a huge one. Man, when you, when you are, yeah, okay, blah, 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 or texty, texty, and down. I'll tell you something right now. Now, I have no intentions of ever getting in a serious relationship, but if you're in a serious relationship, you should at any point be able to say, do me a favor, unlock your phone and hand it to me. And if they say why, you say, I wanna go through all your texts and all your pictures and I wanna see your social media. Let me see it. Now the excuse is, how dare you? Oh, wait, oh, let me change boards. How dare you? How dare you wanna go through my stuff? Do you not trust me? Nope, has nothing to do with that at all. Just let me see it. I did that once to a girl I was dating. We got in a fight after that. And I said, if you're not going to show me what's on your phone right now, I'm breaking up with you. We broke up. Then she texts me two days later and says, okay, if you want to look through my phone, you can. I'm like, you've had ample time to delete anything questionable. That's not the point. Now, you may say, Joker, that's horrible. I can't believe that would be a prerequisite. Hey, same goes. If you want to see my phone, I'll unlock it and hand it to you at any point in time. And yes, that doesn't mean they can't use Snapchat or delete everything like constantly. So if they finish with a salacious text, they can't delete it right away. They can, but when you hit them out of the blue with nowhere, they should be able to see it. And if you say, if you need that to be in a relationship, you are not, you should not be in a relationship. My answer to you is correct. That's why I'm not in a relationship because that would be one of my rules. They don't comfort you in times of need. Yeah, we hear that one. Here's the thing. If you are showing vulnerability and she goes to comfort you, she's going to lose attraction. So I probably wouldn't count on that one anyway. They're rude and inconsiderate. Considerate, they are rude and inconsiderate to service workers. Uh, they become angry when discussing their mistakes. That's another one. 
Man, people that have bad histories, they cannot talk about anything that is self-critical. Here's something you don't see here ever here. Oh man, did I ever screw that up. If there's no self-reflection, if there's no internal dialogue, they cannot take ownership for their mistakes. And you know what? I make mistakes all the time. I have to take ownership of them. I'm the only one doing them. It's just me, myself, and I. But when you do that, you have to say, all right, yeah, my bad, I screwed that up. Uh, when they make a negative comment about everything, the way they flirt with you when they had a partner, whether they flirt with you, whether they cheated on their own old partner, or whether they were just kind of, here, give me a call if anything ever happens over here, almost a guarantee that will happen to you as well. That's, that's swinging from one branch to another and making sure they got a firm grant, br grasp on that branch before they let go of the old one. Dangerous. Uh, all their friends of the opposite sex. Yep, talked about that. They don't show interest. Oh, do they say anything in that paragraph? Okay, I'm going to read this paragraph because it's a big one because I may not have explained this. This is a key when it comes to girls especially. This is a textbook red flag that has been told time and time again. If most of her friends are guys, she probably loves the attention from males and is an attention person. I can't read that word. The worst part about this is most of these guys secretly have a crush on her or want to get in her pants. So they'll hate you as a result. So they'll be always talking negatively about you. She may not see any of their intentions, either out of pure ignorance or she's lying. She may also cause too much drama with her female friends, which causes them not to want to be with her. That's another one. She doesn't show interest in what's important to you. It's let's do what I want to do, my hobbies, but not. And, and this is this is another one that's happened to me a lot, where you'll say, uh, she'll say, uh, where do you, where do you, you can say to her, where do you want to go for dinner? I don't know, whatever. Okay, I feel like pizza tonight. No, not pizza. Tacos? No, I had that for lunch two days. You said you didn't care. Well, now we're going to do... Now we're going to do pizza. And if you don't want that, then, you know, whatever. You can go get what you want or we'll do pizza tonight and something you want tomorrow night when you know what you want. Uh, they don't pay compliments or thank you. Uh, they, ooh, they say they're independent. It's a common thread for people who continuously call themselves independent to mean selfish. I am just selfish. They have a history of drinking too much. Welcome to everybody under the age of 25 right now. There's some really interesting posts about not just during the lockdown, but during all time, how the 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 consumption uh, has gone through the roof for alcohol of women under the age of 30 in the most modern years. They're extremely moody. Yep, that, that may not necessarily be bipolar, but going back and forth from like happy to angry, not good. They hold double standards. They don't want to be treated the way that they treat you. Uh, they Facebook stalk, Facebook stalk, Instagram stalk, anything on the phone all the time. If I if I were to go out on a date, and this is has happened in the past, and it's been my one and done on a date, you go out on a date, and they're on the phone all the time, like texting or messaging, and they go, "Oh, sorry, it was just a friend." Mm. Oh, sorry, it was just forget it. Look, if if your phone, if you love your phone that much, go on a date uh, with whoever's on the other end of the phone because I can't stand that. They're obsessed with fairy tale endings. Oh, we just want to get married and have kids and everything will be perfect. Doesn't work like that. Those are usually the butterfly chasers. The ones that, oh, it's oh wonderful and everything's great. And oh, he's so awesome. I love him so much. And six months later, I'm bored. They don't care about things that don't directly affect them. That's another one. They act uh, how they act when they, they have been drinking. That's a big one. The, the alcohol lowers inhibition and the real person will come out. You ever want to know what someone's like? Let them have a, a couple too many. If they're super flirty, bad warning sign. If they're super angry, warning sign. Um, unless they get like super bubbly and happy and are like friendly, not that kind of friendly. I mean, just like nice. That's pretty much like, that's how I am. I, I get super, like I laugh at stuff and get very mellow. Yes, you can laugh and be mellow at the same time. If you enjoy 420, you know what I mean. They like head games. Uh, they play head games when they are upset. That's like gaslighting and a bunch. Then you're starting to get into some weird narcissist stuff. They like the drama of fighting. Yes. That is also an, another thing where it's like to know that you care about them, you have to fight for them or act jealous about them. That's not healthy. That's like, oh, well, you need to stand up and fight for me. No, I'm not doing that. I'll just rather walk away. They cannot respect themselves, you or your relationship. That one's a pretty easy one. Their relationship history is rocky. 
If you see a, uh, and again, I know we're not on social media, but I use that as an example. If they talk about the boyfriend they had for five years, that's not bad. But how many times do we see now it's like dated for a month or two, dated for a month or two, dated for a month or two. That's not bad. They project their traits onto you and they don't see it. So if they're being uh, sneaky, they will accuse you of being sneaky. If they're selfish, they'll say you're selfish. And this also goes with the you're cheating on me. And you'll say, no, I'm not. And they say, yes, you are. And I'm sure of it. And then what do they do to get back at you? They cheat on you. Even if you didn't cheat, it's imagined. And so they go out and do it. Their family doesn't think it will last. I don't even think families get involved in it anymore. Most people are dating such short periods of time. They don't even get invited or uh, they don't even know who the family is. You're constantly a victim of um, her calling you bad names or just verbally being harsh on you. They religiously delete texts. That's a big one. If you don't see a, a uh, history of texts, huge red flag. They say here, a deleted text usually comes with other red flags. Does your partner also project that you are being sneaky? Do they have suspicious friends, uh, friendships with people of the uh, opposite sex? Do they fly off the handle when you ask questions about them? That's a bad one. I said, we're just friends. Stop being like this. You're just jealous. Or you're insecure. It's again, projecting everything. And again, I'll leave this li list down below if you guys want to like read more in depth. If I read in depth, it'd be like an hour and a half. Uh, they are completely new person after the honeymoon phase. Yes. First month or two or three, you might get a lot of texts. You might get um, spicy photos. They're really into you. And then once you become a couple and you've kind of settled into things, cold fish or things start to change. That's what they're going to really be like. So what they did is they used all the love bombing and they used all the, the hot tension to fish hook you and reel you in. And then after that, they turn into the real them, the old bait and switch. They say, uh, they said, I always get what I want. Oh, I always get what I want. Ugh, just walk away. The same thing with the, I'm a princess. I need to be treated like a queen. Ugh. They're sneaky on Snapchat. That goes back to the phone thing. They tell little lies, which is the same as telling omission lies. Um, but little mundane things. Uh, there was a girl I was dating where her mom would call and she was over at my place watching a movie and she'd say she was somewhere else, like she was out at Walmart getting something. And I'd say, why didn't you say you were here? Oh, she doesn't know about us. And and she then she gets all in my business about relationships and I just don't feel like ex explaining it. And at the time I said, well... Yeah, I hate nosy parents, but come to find out, she actually had a regular boyfriend, and I was the side dish, and I did not know that. They, um, they're they nervous about texts or they, they, or calls that they receive. Yeah, again, face f phone face down, um, and them walking out of the room when a call comes in, or turning. People don't realize it, but let me grab one of my phones here. People don't realize it, but when you're sitting over here next to somebody, and they just very slightly turn the phone away, and, and they don't realize it because when they're looking at something, surfing a feed, it'll be straight on. But then they go to text and all of a sudden it's twisting whatever direction you go away from. That's a bad warning sign. They grew up with an unstable family life. That one right there would probably be red flag number one. That's a big one that may not come out right away. They constantly scream and yell when you're angry or when they're angry. They have an excuse for everything. Cheating's never okay under any circumstance. Lying is never okay under any any circumstance. But they're going to try to make excuses for it. Um, you know, I, I just had a death in the family and I've been really upset lately and I was emotionally confused. And now they know what they're doing. Don't let them pull that over your eyes. And that was about all of them. So I just wanted to give a quick rundown. Like I said, I'll leave this list down below. But I thought this would be fun because there's a lot of them that, that just make you think back to relationships you had and say, Oh, you know something? I did have a relationship like that. And now that I think about it, yeah, that did happen. So there's a couple ones. I'll leave a, a link, like I said, at the beginning of this video for my other one. And that's stuff like um, piercings, like weird piercings, right? Piercings here, piercings there, piercings through the cheeks, the ears. That's another obvious one. Um, multicolored hair, bright hair, unnatural colored hair, um, ink, and really... Like if she has a little tiny butterfly somewhere on her hip, that's a big difference than like neck, chest, tattoos, up and down, all that stuff. That can be that can be a bad sign. Um, and then I don't know if there's any other any other ones that we didn't touch on. But if you guys think of any that I didn't I didn't touch on or I didn't hit, list them down below. Let's make a good list, and that way we'll have some fun reading through those. And how many of these did you miss? 
when you were in a relationship and now coming back around, you went, oh, you know what? This one I missed and and it totally ruined me. I'll tell you mine. It was a horrible family life and I didn't know about it. It was a horrible, horrible family life and I didn't know about it and turned out she was a, a covert narcissist and basically had to get attention from guys to fill her happiness meter and it was while we were dating and it wasn't just conversation that she had to get uh, filled by. It was stepping out behind my back. So it's happened to me too. Every one of us have missed it at some point, I'm sure. So leave your list of uh, ones down below. I'd love to hear them. Guys, if you'd like to support my work, links are below as always. If you have, thank you very much. The best way you can support me, like, comment, share, subscribe. Only about 60% of you or 65% of you are still not subscribed. So if you like the work I do, smash that uh, subscribe button and we'll leave it there. I'm uh, This is Better Bachelor. I'm Joker. And remember, um, it can almost be anything. Nowadays, finding someone without red flags is near impossible. You either have to hope they have a lot of little ones or you just decide not to date at all, I guess. Mm -hmm.